hi guys welcome back to my channel so in today's video i'm going to be talking about collars and i'm going to be showing you how to make two types of collars the first one will be the shirt collar while the second type of collar i'll be teaching you today will be the bishop collar so in case you're wondering what's going on my table i'm going to quickly run through all the items that i have on my table and what the usefulness would be for so as you can see i've gone ahead to make out like you know a shirt dummy without the collar so you can see i have the button stand right here or this is a button wrap rather and this is where the button and the button hole goes on so if i open it up you'll see that as one on each side so on this side i have that button wrap and i used a different color of thread for the bobbin so you can see and i've got the second bobbin wrap right here as well you would also notice that you know the whole thing is basically finished and you have the neckline and it's just ready to sew so the essence of this is just so that when i'm doing it i actually want to show you how i go ahead to sew um the collar onto the um, top or your dress or your shirt dress whatever it is that you're doing so basically i went ahead to make this dummy for that and i have two of the dummies right here okay so that's it so i'm going to put both of them aside and then focus on the other things i have on my table so first off on my table i have my measuring tape right here you'll be needing your measuring tape i've also got myself my tailor's chalk as well i've got some pins i've also got my magnet to hold my pins i've got my paper scissors and that's because we're going to be learning how to draft a shirt collar first and obviously you need to cut out whatever it is that you've drafted so i've got my paper scissors right here and i've also got myself my fabric scissors and of course that is so that we can cut the fabric out i've got myself my ruler and that's because we're going to be drafting a pattern just to make it easy for me i've got myself um, my set square as well so this is what the set square looks like in case you don't know i know that most times i often use my pattern master however this is an actual set square if you're looking to shop any of the tools that i've mentioned please check out the link that i have in the description bar of this video as well as every other video and you'll definitely find out the affiliate links to purchase these items i've also got myself pattern paper right here you'll need a pencil but i'll be using a marker for this purpose for the purpose of this video rather then of course i've got my fabric so this is the fabric i'm using for the color and i'm using the contrasting fabric intentionally so that you can see how it works out and then of course i've got myself this air stay and in case you don't know stay is basically just to give you know um the collar just some form of stance however this one is a softer version so if you wanted something really stiff you can go for this one and here in nigeria it's called collar stay it's actually quite stiff but i think it might be too stiff so obviously i will be making use of this one which is just the hair stay so without further ado we're going to get into the video for today thing that you need when you're about to you know draft a shirt collar whether it's the bishop collar or the actual shirt collar is you need whatever it is that you're putting that collar on so in this case we're going to assume that this is our you know shirt and it's just the collar left whether it's a dress or a top whatever it is that needs a collar you first need to get it then as you can see you're going to open it up and then you're going to fold it so that you have the button wrap meeting each other like that and then you also have the back neck meeting each other and the shoulder seams meeting each other if you find the need to pin it in position go ahead and pin it in position next thing you want to notch the um, center back which is in this one that's in fold after notching the center back you want to take the measurements that you have here now remember that for this one the allowance for sewing has already been added to this so ideally if you are working with a pattern i would advise that you take your measurement from the pattern if you had a pattern for this i would advise that you take your measurement from the paper itself however this was cut on freehand so because i know that i have an half inch allowance everywhere the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to mark out my half inch allowance so that i know exactly where my actual neckline starts from So after marking out my allowance all around like this, I'm going to now go ahead and measure exactly where I have my allowance. So now that I've marked out the allowance, I'm going to go ahead and read my measurements and I'm going to be doing that in centimeters. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to just move this like this so you can see. And I'm starting from the center back. I just place my measuring tape like so. And I place it exactly on the places where I have the allowance. And guys, the difference is you are going to stop 
just before the button wrap so as you can see what i have here is 19 i don't measure the button wrap i just stopped just before so i have 19 centimeters right there okay so now that we have that you can put that down somewhere i'm going to put this aside so i have 19 centimeters you're going to reach for your pattern paper just right here and the first one i'm going to teach you is the bishop collar okay and let's start with the bishop collar so before we go ahead i'm going to teach you a couple of fundamentals when you're using a set square right and you hear the term square out so if i say from here if i say here is zero zero and here is if i say zero to one mark 10 centimeters this is 10 centimeters right here right i'm going to zoom that in so you can see so if i say zero to one mark 10 centimeters this is 10 centimeters right here okay and the instruction says square out what are you expected to do is you're expected to take your set square ensure this edge of the set square is straight against here okay so you can see that so that you can get a parallel line a line that will be 90 degrees oh not parallel perpendicular rather a perpendicular line so as you can see this is straight against this edge of the paper this one gives me a straight line so that means if i measure from here to here i have 10 centimeters as well here i would have 10 centimeters and that is exactly what i have that is exactly what i have right here okay however from this line that we have here if i say mark eight inches and square down okay this is my sorry eight centimeters and square down this is the eight centimeters here and I need to square down. What I would do is I would take my set square again, use this first top line as a guide, and then draw a perpendicular line that is a 90 degrees angle line to this line here. Immediately I've done that, I've gone ahead to square out this or square down this. I hope you understand the function of a set square. Essentially, a set square is used to get to a straight line from another straight line that is usually perpendicular to the previous straight line. So from this line again, if I wanted to get another straight horizontal line, I would just place it exactly on this line. Ensure the edges of my set square is aligned with that line. So you can see the line here. I ensure this is aligned with this line, place it against it, and I just, you know, square this out. I will get another straight line. That is how to use a set square. So we're going to go over to the pattern. Like I said, we measured 19 centimeters, just a recap in case you don't remember. I'm going to flip over to a clean part of my paper. And what we're going to do is we're going to measure the first, we're going to label the first part. I'm going to use my marker. So you okay, can guys, so sorry for that. Now I'm going to pick a starting point and the starting point I'm going to pick will be somewhere here. Okay. I'm going to label that as A, just right here. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is you want to measure a here and you want to measure 19 centimeters which is the measurements you took off the outfit so if your measurement was 23 centimeters you will measure 23 centimeters whatever measurement you took off the outfit will give you a to b okay so this is a the starting point i'm going to measure a to b and it's going to be the measurement that i took okay which is 19 centimeters so again i'm using my set square i'm making sure this edge is straight so that i can get a perfect straight line so i do that and i have that line so a to b is 19 centimeters so where exactly i have 19 centimeters i mark that as my b okay a to b and i have 19 centimeters that is my a to b now what you need to do to b is you need to square b up just to the top just square it up a little bit okay so i'm going to get my set square again i'm going to place it against this line i don't know if you can see clearly i hope you can like that so that is perfect and then i'm going to take b up okay right so right now it looks funny we just have you know this line and this line now the next thing you want to do is you want to determine how wide you want the collar stand 
and the first one we're doing is the bishop color okay let's start with the bishop color so the first one you want to do is the bishop color you want to determine how wide you want the color stand and for me i like my color stands at three centimeters so what you're going to do is from here a to c you want it to be three centimeters if you want your color stand to be two and a half centimeters your a to c will be two and a half but my one this is c my a to c is three centimeters okay i've written that there again you want to square out c so i'm going to do the same thing get my line make sure my set square is you know placed properly and that now if you did this correctly and you measure here you should have the same three centimeter as well which is what i have so that means i have gone ahead to do that correctly okay so the next thing we're going to do and i want you guys to concentrate and look at it from b we're going to raise point b so we're going to have we have a b c we're going to label this as d we are going to raise point b and point d by one centimeter 1.5 centimeters each so they are going to raise point b and point d by 1.5 centimeters reach each so from point b i mark 1.5 centimeters like that and from point d i mark 1.5 centimeters like that okay so the next thing to do is to grab your pattern master or your french curve i absolutely forgot that we needed this sorry about that we actually need this so the next thing to do is to draw a slightly curved line from this point where you raised point b so that it tapers back into the line a b so you can see that and it extends beyond there so you can see how that is going smoothly and you do the same thing for d Now what you will notice is because you've done the exact same thing, you still have this here, this distance here as three centimeters, as three centimeters as well. So it's three centimeters all the way because it's raised the same thing. This is raised by 1.5 centimeters. This is raised by 1.5 centimeters. It's raised the same thing. So I, and if you notice when it came to this area here, I extended this one, but I did not extend this one and it's intentional. You do not need to extend it. So the next thing to do is to make the button wrap from this point b where we've raised we're going to measure the button wrap on the outfit so again you want to grab your outfit just like that and you want to measure the button wrap my button wrap is three centimeters see that so from this point here you want to mark three centimeters you're marking from where you've raised the point b you mark three centimeters and label it as point e so this is point e okay so what you're going to do is you're going to draw a slight curve to connect point d to e so just watch me a slight curve to connect point d to e all right guys does this look like a bishop collar it absolutely does this is what the bishop collar looks like and at this point you are done with the bishop collar so i'm going to go ahead and cut this out okay and this is what we have as our pattern now it's important to note that when you're working with this you want to cut this area unfold and you also want to cut out two of this so now we're going to go ahead and cut out our fabric i'm going to reach for the fabric that we're using which is this fabric and i'm going to pin this we're going to be cutting out two so you can go ahead and cut both at the same time simultaneously or you can cut them one by one whatever you want to do is absolutely fine And after pinning down we're going to cut measure out the sewing allowance like i said you can cut two at once if you want to cut two at once all you have to do is just fold this like that so you can cut both at once ensure the center back area aligns or mids and then just repin it so if i wanted to cut both at once this is what i would do so after pinning this is what it looks like mark out the allowance with your measuring tape so 
so the sewing allowance i use is half an inch and i'm going to cut it all around so you can see So now that I've cut this, I put my remaining fabric away and then I grab the air stay and we're also going to cut two of that as well. So now that we've cut out the fabric and the stay, this is what it looks like. Next thing to do is to unpin our pieces and we're going to iron on the stay. You can keep your pattern for future reference. But next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to iron out the stay. So I always like to mark the wrong side before I open up my fabric. This is the wrong side. This is the wrong side. I am ironing out the stay onto the wrong side. So you get this. You find the sticky side, the rough side. You place it right here. And then you go ahead and iron that. You repeat the same thing for this one as well. Find the sticky side and put it down and then you iron it on so i'm going to go do that okay, and come so back I'm to back you guys. now after ironing it this is what it looks like and as you can see i've ironed it like i said if you were going for a much thicker effect you can definitely use the other one the other kind of stay this one it's stiffer and you know would give you that effect that you're going for so the next thing to do is to notch the middle at the bottom and at the top So after notching both middles, what you're going to do is you're going to open them up. You can see this place has to be up, right? That curve. And you're going to place it on each other so that they match. Make sure the notch matches. And then we're going to pin this into place. So starting off from the top, we're going to pin it all the way. After pinning, we're going to mark our sewing allowance of half an inch all around like that. Okay, so after marking out the sewing allowance, this is what it looks like. You're going to go ahead and sew this starting from here. You don't touch this bottom. You start from here and you sew all around like that. So I'm going to go do that and come back to you guys. So at this point, I'm done sewing just going to take off all the pins did it you can see the different color thread that was intentional i used the white one here and then i used um like a shade of green just behind so you can see it so the next thing to do is you're going to turn this inside out but before then i always like to trim off all the excess because what happens is either you trim it off or you notch i always take the trim it off option when i'm sure that i've done the right thing so you want to trim it off as close as possible and this just takes off all the bulk or takes out all the bulk so you can see that and then we're going to turn this inside out we're going to go ahead and iron this nicely and then i'll come back okay, to you okay guys so after ironing this is where we're at this is what it looks like okay i'm going to put this aside and now it's time for us to apply this to our or to attach this to our blouse or skirt um top or shirt dress or whatever it is you know so i want to start from the wrong side this is the wrong side as you can see this is the joining for the shoulder so it's the wrong side you want to grab this one because it's usually the same color it doesn't matter which part you want to grab one of them and you want to find the notch okay so i'm going to notch um pair the notch of the collar the bishop collar to the notch of the main top on the inside so what's happening is that the right side of the collar is against the wrong side of the top or of the shirt or of the dress you pin it in place and then you go ahead and walk your way and pin the whole entire neckline till you get to the button wrap
want to make sure it matches don't forget the right side of the collar to the wrong side of the um outfit and as you can see where the joining of the collar is it should be where this ends so pin that in place Okay. after pinning you're going to mark out the sewing allowance of half an inch and you're going to sew this on half an inch so we'll go ahead and do that we know how to um now that we've done that and um i'm sure you guys saw when i was doing that the half an inch this is what it looks like now that we've done this the next thing to do is for us to top stitch this so this is what it looks like on the wrong side and as you can see we're onto something good so the next thing for us is to top stitch this okay so we're going to go ahead and go back to the sewing machine right grab here and we're just going to fold this over by half an inch starting from this edge and we're just going to sew this in place just like that so if you want you can pin it in place now Okay guys, so this is how it should look like after. I'm going to go ahead and top stitch this all the way down. And as you can see, this edge aligns and so through this edge as well. So go do that and I'll come back to you guys. So at this point, I am now done with the um, bishop collar. And this is what it looks like on the right side. As you can see, I went ahead to top stitch and I did it so close and i think it's pretty neat maybe not the best but it's pretty neat and this is what it should look like with the button wrap it should just be at the right edge start at the right point and end at the right point close to the button wrap because what happens is you go ahead to put your button right there and then by the time you set out the whole outfit it should look like this so hold This is how you should have it. So this is what the bishop collar looks like. And this should be snug to your leg neck. When you're doing pattern, obviously the measurements you get, because you're using your actual neck measurement, it will be more accurate. But this is like a freehand thing. So obviously this might not be the most accurate, but this is what the collar looks like all around. Now, when you're working with your shirt collar, you want to start the exact same way that you do for your other color, okay?
and this is how we do the bishop color remember but now we're not done so the next thing that we have or the next thing that we need to do is we need to measure f f is usually three centimeters away from c so i go from c and i measure three centimeters so this is three centimeters and i label this as f okay i square f out as well so after squaring f out i'll now determine how wide i want my color fold to be so remember that this is the color stand and we're about to make the color fall this one i did 2.5 centimeters for my fall i recommend 4.5 centimeters to 5. so i want my color fall to be 4.5 centimeters. so i do f to g so f to g i mark 4.5 centimeters then i label that as g okay so now that i have point g i'm going to square out point g as well So the next thing to do is label this as so we are going to label this we don't need to label this because you don't really need anything there so you have fg you label this as h at point h you mark one centimeter and you draw a slant line to blend back into the line gh this is the line gh so this blends back into here okay and then the last thing to do is we're going to match this place here so remember that when we're doing this when we're doing the curve here c to d we use this part of the um, pattern master we're going to do the same thing so that this blends back into this so just watch this so you place the pattern master in the opposite direction and you create a line that blends back into the line f here and at this point you are now done so when you're sewing this connects to this okay we're cutting out this part we do not need this part we're cutting it out okay so just watch how i cut this out now i have the color fall so if you notice this is what i cut out so you have the color stand and the color fall all of this marker has messed up my table but that's oops, absolutely all right we're going to get our fabric and we're going to cut out the pieces we cut out two of each of them so let's start stepping into position you have to mark out the sewing allowance of half an inch all around so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, after doing that, we're going to cut this out. What I like to do is so that it doesn't get confusing. Why I have my arrow facing down because this part joins to this part and I need to know because it can be a bit confusing. I always just create a notch right here. You can see that. Okay. So I have my color fold and I have the notch at the bottom. Cut out the color stand and in this case the notch will be at the top. And this notch is just an indicative notch. It is not the center notch. That's why it's not in the center. Alright guys, so I've cut out the stay and I realized that I forgot to make a notch at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. It's a bit thick to cut through all the fabrics, but I will do it nonetheless. I'm pinning the pieces like so. Mark out the wrong side. So what you want to do is open up the wrong side and then you want to iron the stay right there like that so i'm going to go do all of that and come back to you guys all right guys so i'm done um putting the ironing the stay on 
and this is what they look like this is the color fall again and this is the color stone i don't know if you can see it already but when you have your shirt this is how it is right so yeah we're in good company so i'm going to put the color stand away and we're going to work on the color fall so remember where you have the notches that are indicative these are the notches that i have here at the bottom if you have any excess um stay sticking out you can trim it off um sometimes the stay does stretch so i have this now right here i'm going to place this one on it the part that goes to the bottom has the indicative no notches or the bottom has the indicative notches so what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and hold all around with with pins hold it in place so you can hold the sides the top and the other side as well so yeah that's why i said the sides actually so hold both sides and then the top with pins and we're going to be sewing half an inch from here starting like this up the up to here all around like so and then back down so you can mark out the sewing allowance if it makes your work easier the sewing allowance we left is half an inch so after marking out the allowance i'm going to go ahead and sew this all around and i'll come back to you guys so after sewing this is what it looks like as you can see these are my stitches so it goes to the corner here and make sure that it's properly done um so you want to unpin them now or take out the pins rather after taking out the pins i always like to snip the corner so that i can get a nice and smooth corner so i snip out both corners and i also still trim the allowance that i have here So after trimming, turn it inside out. Iron and top stitch, okay? So I'll go ahead and do that and come back to you guys. Okay guys, so this is what it looks like after ironing. I'm showing the side with the other color thread. Ironing and top stitching. So this is what it looks like. Top stitched and ironed. And when it's in half, you can see that it meets nicely here. This is the fall part. So if you had a collar, for instance, if you were doing this, this is the part that falls right here. Okay. So you can see how nice that looks. Okay. So we're on to something good. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make a notch. And as you can see, when I was top stitching, I did it all around first. And then I did the bottom just to hold it in place as one piece. So right now we are going to go ahead and fold it into two. And then you want to get the center notch. Now you're getting the center notch. So now I have the center notch here. Okay. So what you want to do on here is you want to get each of these pieces, right? And remember where we have this indicative knot notches at the top. You want to make a center notch right there at the top. After making the center notch that is right here at the center, I'm going to put this one right here. Okay, so quickly we'll observe this, right? So you have the right, you have the top part, you have the bottom. The indicative notches are here you have the center notch here place this on this it doesn't matter in what direction just make sure the notch the notches align if you need to pin it in place pin it in place then you also want to now go ahead and place the second piece of this one on it so essentially the color fall is sandwiched in between the color stand pieces And from here, the process is entirely simple because we're going to follow the process or the exact same steps that we use for this other one. So you want to go ahead and sew from here all the way around to here on half an inch. So I'll go do that and come back to you guys. So after sewing it, this is what it looks like, as you can see. So the exact same way we did for the last one, I'm going to go ahead and trim this so that it's really low. We're going to turn it to the right side. So I'm going to go ahead and iron this flat and come back to you guys. 
hey guys so after ironing this flat this is what it looks like and as you can see our color is taking on shape it's looking nice so i'm going to go ahead and match these two points and then i'm going to notch the center of the two collar stand pieces and the exact same way we did for the bishop collar that's how we're going to attach this to this point okay so after top stitching it this is what it looks like and as you can see i went ahead to top stitch close to the edge and it looks really nice this is the wrong side of it that's why you have all this loose thread and this is the right side and when you fold this over this is what happens So thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was worth your while. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to leave your comments, suggestions and feedback in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you in my next video next week. Bye.